Good afternoon. My name is Kent Dix. I'm CEO of Light365, and thank you for the opportunity to present to you this evening. The topic I'm going to talk about is intelligent digital therapeutics and engagement in biometrics, including rapid diagnostics. Light365 is a platform, a digital health as a service platform, serving the purpose of connecting people remotely to be able to uh, manage large populations of patients um, across a variety of disease states. We wanna be able to bring data in economically from home to be able to monitor patients and keep them out of the hospital to reduce costs. Our main purpose is enabling clinicians, clinicians and enterprise healthcare to connect with patients in a low cost se setting, typically home. Currently, we realize that the market is changing. The market's changing to be more consumer directed and more um, directed by payers as well. You're starting to see a, a major channels emerging where telehealth companies are actually merging with uh, payers to call what I call a pay provider relationship. And they need to be able to be closer to the patient in order to uh, monitor them and keep them um, out of the hospital to reduce cost. And so you're starting to see, at least in the US, major organizations that are starting to put this together, whether it's Amazon and Transparent or Teladoc or United Healthcare and Vivify or Amwell or MD Live and Cigna, a lot of them are partnering up to be able to embrace this new form of pay provider kind of relationship and moving to a more of a value-based care model. Our team has been in digital health for the last 15 years. Uh, we have previously created a company that was probably one of the first IOT of healthcare, IOMT of medical things to be able to connect remotely to get little amount of light amount of data from home, sending it to the cloud so it can be analyzed to make sure that a patient's doing well or not and determining if you need to intervene. The problem in the marketplace today is a lot of times remote patient monitoring solutions that you're waiting until the patient becomes uh, into complex care. They're already spending a lot of money um, and you wanna to try to intervene way before they get to spending that money. In order to do that, you need to provide uh, technology and solutions that are connected in the home that are cost effective and meet the, the patient's needs to be able to connect them to their, to their healthcare provider instead of waiting to deploy massive amount of equipment to home when they're, they're sick and they're, they, they've already been spending a massive amount of money. Um, so the biggest problem we're trying to address is trying to get into the middle of this hump where people are, are um, newly chronic or becoming chronic, and we want to intervene proactively instead of reactively. The other thing is we want to be able to, as if you know anything about remote patient monitoring solutions, we don't want to be just shipping solutions out to a patient scale, blood pressure, pulse ox, connected devices, um, and be the only thing that... Uh, is, is a disparate solution. We wanna be attaching that to a value-based organization or to an outcomes-based organization. So Light 65 helps with data, the data solution and collecting a variety of different ways, which we'll show you, integrating into the clinical backend system and intelligence like decision support and analytics, but we wanna to connect to a platform which is outcomes-based from engagement, intervention, and outcomes. That's the only way I think RPM is gonna work in the future is when you bring both of those together on one platform. As far as our team is concerned, you know, I talk about uh, remote patient monitoring uh, 2.0, which is uh, internet of things, but uh, RPM 1.0 was these boxes that were expensive that connected to phone lines and you typically only used them with the stick of the sick. Our team developed um, RPM 2.0, uh, the internet of things, connecting wirelessly to devices, scale, blood pressure, pulse oxygen, and sending the data back to the cloud where it can be reviewed by a doctor or by an analytic system. But what I want to talk about today is RPM 3.0. 3.0 is wearables, sensors, patches, disposables that are light, cost-effective, that can get into that middle of the hump to get to more patients to get data um, cost effectively and to be built into the therapy and treatment of a patient. We all know that remote patient monitoring <clears throat> is actually effective. So if it's effective down at the complex care, then we want to take that effectiveness and move it up to a larger population to be effective across a large span of patients. So we've seen a 65% in ER uh, visit or ER reduction in utilization 
a 40% decrease in acute care utilization, and then a 30% increase in clinical workflow. So, you know, one of the things we talk about is in RPM 3.0 is the wearable side of the business. So we've all seen wearables as far as being with Fitbits, you know, and over on the other side of the hump, which was for health and wellness, but Fitbits or the health and wellness side was not doing major impacts to people that have chronic disease like congestive heart failure. They needed to be able to use a wearable solution in healthcare, but get meaningful, actionable data that allows you to be able to go through and take care of a patient remotely. And we're starting to see the wearable marketplace is accelerating quite dramatically now. Uh, it was lagging uh, many years ago in 2016 and 17 when we first started getting into the business of wearable side. And now it's starting to take off because it's starting to get to those larger populations. Wearables can be multiple different configurations as well, whether it's, you know, one of the partners we work with that does fall detection and concussions, or another one that does, you know, continuous streaming of temperature, you know, board, uh, body core temperature, you know, to uh, send it back to a server and can last on a coin cell for up to six months, uh, can be used with sepsis warning, uh, or it's smart wearable devices and sensors like we're helping to develop and, and our patents cover as well, to be able to build it into the therapy of the, of the patient. And then what I say, nudge them into compliance. Uh, looking for certain data that's normal or not normal with the patient, and then trying to nudge them back to be able to take their readings or the medication to try to keep them adherent and staying out of the hospital. So, you know, with our solution, we go through and call it a carable instead of a wearable, because we believe it's, it's used primarily in healthcare. Uh, it has temperature, heart rate, heart rate variability, stress, hydration, motion on it. It has the nudge feature, which allows them to indicate that, you know, they need to take their medication or take a reading, or maybe somebody's uh, waiting downstairs from your doctor appointment to nudge you, you know, into a certain direction. We also designed it so that it's not utilizing um, 5G or 6G coming up, that it's not consuming big amounts of data that are being sent to the cloud, that it's sending little tiny bits of data and then using functionality within the inside the device to be able to expand or explode the functionality locally on the device instead of shipping all this data back and forth. So, you know, we're taking advantage of, of wireless um, uh, technology or wireless uh, spectrum, such as like narrowband IoT um, or LoRa or Sigfox, which may send eight bytes or bits of data at a time, uh, like reading and date and time. But when it gets on the wearable itself, it explodes it into a certain edge processing, edge logic to be able to do a whole bunch of applications locally, like maybe reminding somebody to take their medication or ask them and take their blood pressure. Um, we also drive it by artificial intelligence. Uh, we, uh, from the data, we also want to, uh, we also have Bluetooth on it to be able to talk to a number over 400 different medical devices. Uh, we have a lean operating system on it, which allows it to use that narrow band IOT to reduce the size of the device and also the power consumption. So if you're not shipping all this data back and forth, and you don't have to use 5G, then you can actually use a much smaller transceiver to be able to uh, reduce the size and the power consumption. We also put narrow, uh, sorry, NFC transceivers on our, um, or radios on our device as well, so that we can talk to um, uh, rapid diagnostics devices that have gone from, or strips have gone from analog to digital and also potentially a nurse's badge or pairing devices together. If you wanna be able to take a, a wearable and take a pulse oximeter and touch it to it, then it can pair automatically and connect to it and send data to the cloud. We've been, because of this, we've been issued this one, instead of seven patents, we've now been issued eight patents in the area of the lean operating system in the area of wearable devices communicating to OEM medical devices, implantable devices, and rapid diagnostics. Um, and we've also um, uh, uh, have patents on the whole artificial intelligence uh, and geolocation part of wearables talking to external devices as well, all in helping 
to um, to control seniors and and people that are not technology savvy to try to help them with uh, remotely monitoring them uh, in their homes, but bringing assistance through uh, this te this technology. We've also designed the wearable device so that it has the ability to take patches on the back of it, whether it's uh, looking at interstitial fluids or um, as sweat, maybe looking at chloride levels for ovulation or sweat for alcohol or drug you know, consumption. Uh, we want to be able to have the wearable device so it takes in biometric information, but also can take in additional information uh, that is disposable uh, from that as well to be able to be used. A little bit about the lean operating system. We talked a, a, a little bit about it, but you know the lean operating system is important as far as reducing the size of the uh, device itself, the wearable. In fact, we don't like to make wearable watches. We want to make wearable bands that are very, very thin, cost effective, and disposable, right as well. So you could use a band in maybe the therapy of oncology to remind somebody to take their chemotherapy uh, at pills at home or their home hormone replacement therapy. You could use um, you know, the wearable bands to on discharge from the hospital to help with 30 day readmits and be able to get little tiny sensor data from the band to see if the patient is doing okay if they're normal or if they need to intervene with them uh, before, um, you know, before they get back to the emergency room and remit it back into the hospital. The other thing the, the lean operating system does is it allows us to reduce power consumption because we're reducing the size you know, of the chips that we have in it because we're not using 5G and talking to a tower that's five, uh, sorry, a mile away. We're using narrow band IoT or LoRa Sigfox, which takes less power to do. We can actually start running a lot of these bands off of coin cell and actually get um, a lot longer um, cycle out of the coin cell or out of the recharging cycle of it as well. So when we're looking at the competitor space that's out there, we'll start looking at the stack uh, of services. You know, there are the RPM 2.0 on the far right side with companies like 100 plus in the US or HRS or Vivify or Philips. Um, they've got traditional chronic care management um, and, uh, you know, episodic uh, care as well and services uh, that are there. Um, there are other ones that are starting to come up like Current Health, Biopharmist, you know, K-Health, Babylon, VivaLink, and BioIntelliSense. They're starting to use wearable devices. Some of them are very dedicated to like cardiac uh, from that, but we are designing our solutions so that we want to go across multiple disease states and try to really try to take effect of exception-based processing, where we're looking at a whole host of, of um, patients that we're connected to, and we wanna be able to use light sensor technology, L-I-T-E, light sensor technology, to be able to connect, to uh, get data from patients economically and trying to deal with the patients that really just need our immediate attention and not the whole uh, patient base. If we can use small wearable technology and sensors to go across and create compliant 70 to 80% of the patients, and we only have to intervene with 20 to 30%, that's a huge cost saving, right? From not only the resource power to intervene, but also keeping people out of the ER or the hospital. Uh, we are on AWS as a platform. We interface to over 550 uh, medical devices, uh, scales, blood pressure, pulse ox, cardio, you know, mobile, uh, EKG, uh, spirometry, just a whole host of devices that we interface to in multiple different brands. Uh, we have care portals that you can set alerts with to send data into the backend system. And we can also send the data into the electronic health record, right, as well, so it can be viewed. Our platform uh, brings a whole host of functionality in, whether it's from rapid diagnostics or decision support with our, our sister company, Avicina, or remote care or intelligent data or personalization. One of the things I do wanna point out is I really truly believe in 2022 and beyond that patients and consumers are gonna start asking for more personalization of their solutions and not just a one size fits all and also disparate solutions. Providers and payers alike are getting really tired 
of having to deal with disparate solutions that only deal with one thing. And in order to address the whole person solution and personalization, they have to go interface with 20 different systems to do that. It takes a year to get through IT security with providers sometimes. And it's very, very messy as far as who you prescribe it to and how it gets distributed and how the data gets integrated into the backend system. Providers and payers alike are looking for a platform to integrate multiple solutions together in it, to be able to um, customize and personalize what's needed off that platform and be able to distribute it to the patient and engage the patient in taking care. Also, you know, with this, it's our responsibility as a company to go through and make sure that we have multiple different ways that we engage consumers in their care. So we've shown, you know, there's the tablet solution, which allows us to be able to um, go through and do two-way video and telehealth. We have an application. We also are gonna be using voice assist, smart TVs, nice format for seniors to be able to see their data um, and wearable devices. And then in combination with sensors and wearables, talking to voice assist and the tablet and the smart TV. So it all is integrated together and personalizes it to the individual. We have gone through and provided multiple different uh, levels of connectivity. That's one of our strengths as a company is understanding how people like to engage in their care and be connected. We call the first one, I call it tech savvy, but tech comfortable, which is allows an application to be downloaded, but somebody has to pair a device, Bluetooth device could take 30 seconds to do, but maybe like when my dad was living, he would not, he did not have a smartphone, did not be able to use the BYOD device or pair to the device himself. We have the cellular devices that are already built in to scale blood pressure and glucose, which allows you to be able to have the cellular connectivity that sends the data directly to the cloud. You ship it out to the patient, they just step on it, take their blood pressure, and it goes directly into their health record. We have the hubs, little tiny hubs that, you know, we have a PERS hub, which actually help my phone can't get down, that they can put around their neck a little pendant that they can push to they have an emergency, but they can also have an Android program on it that talks to 300 different medical devices and sends the data to the cloud. And then we have the full turnkey system, which is two-way video, content, surveys, reminders, uh, interfaces to a couple hundred uh, different medical devices. It's the, full, uh, it's the full kit of what it takes to be able to connect and go, going forward. We also put these in, in kits uh, as well that are easy to distribute, uh, easy to just take out, plug in, and take your reading. Uh, very easy to, do, to send out the patient and get them engaged. We also have a clinical backend system that we can set alerting. Uh, we can set up programs uh, under a hospital system, like maybe for uh, CHF or for hypertension or for diabetes or for kidney care, um, and, and be able to put in notes and be able to help bill off of it, at least in the US for reimbursement for RPM and, and, and remote patient monitoring and remote therapeutic monitoring codes that have been brought up in the US. Um, very much connected to our, our digital platform, our virtual care platform. It can run from actually zero, you can download our app for free uh, under Life 365 Health in the Android or iOS store uh, to an average price of between $15 to $30 per month, including the cost of the equipment, up to $95 a month, depending on how expensive you have the equipment. We are also are creating a virtual care app, which allows patients to manage themselves by ingesting the care record from, or the care plan from the provider and the benefits plan from the payer and letting the, the patient actually manage themselves. So they can take in readings from the devices that have been paired together. They can schedule you know, uh, Uber rides to be able to go to their doctor. They can refill their medication uh, from that. There's a whole lot of information they can do to be able to, to um, self-manage. And then we do have partners with us that are very critical along the way. Partners that allow us to interface to the electronic health record. Uh, partners that like AMR Ambulance, which is the, one of the largest ambulance companies in the world, which allows us to be able to use their paramedicine to have um, paramedics that go to the home, stabilize them, use our equipment to be able to connect them to a nurse call center, and then um, never transport them to the ER or the hospital from that. So it's a big cost savings for, uh, for the payers. And by the way, the patients don't wanna be in the hospital in the first place. 
We have reimbursement codes in the US that are coming up, new ones for remote patient monitoring and remote uh, therapeutic monitoring, and also for kidney care. And we have target markets that we use with our wearable devices and RPM devices in telehealth, uh, hospital providers, uh, health and wellness, uh, retail and pharmacy. I think the pharmacist is gonna take a much more active role in the future, especially in rural locations to take care of patients. Uh, providers, pharmaceutical companies, physician groups, especially now that they have reimbursement for the RPM and RTM codes, and then large self-insured employers. So I know it was a lot of information to cover in a short period of time, and I apologize for that, but I thank you so much for listening to our presentation, and I'm more than willing to answer any questions you may have. Thank you.